G'day folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So, last video was a bit of a doozy. Um, one, I didn't record half of it by accident. Two, I left the intro that I recorded on my phone. Um, on my phone and didn't put it on. But, you know what, I just left it up. Saved myself the embarrassment of um, re-uploading and putting, putting you guys through the torture of watching another upload that was identical to the last one. Plus about five minutes. Anyhow... So what we've got today is a lady um, gave me this mower the other day, little Victor two-stroke. The engine's absolutely hammered. Um, there will be no getting that one running, but I have got plans for that. Oh, for the frame anyway. And she's given me this one to service um, and give it back to her. So, you know, it's not far off being your basic Chonda powered Audi um, Bunnings big box store bargain basement mower. Um, except it's got, you know, the Briggs and Stratton uh, 148cc on there. So, technically speaking, that's um, where they put the 450. That's a torque reading now instead of horsepower. So, it's about three and a half horsepower. On a 16-inch frame, um, running properly, it should cut the grass quite well. Flimsy frame, though. Best suited to little yards. Anyway, moving along, we'll um, get these things sorted out. It's very dirty and has had a few um, owner improvements. The air filter's on backwards. Underneath is just caked with um, dry grass. So I'm gonna take it up to the wash bay, wash it, and then, then we'll get cracking, pulling it apart, and I'll show you what they've done to it over time while we get it back up to service. So a question I had in the comments the other day, um, someone asked, you know, is it safe to pressure clean the engines? Will it do any damage? Well. I live by a um, pretty simple rule. If I'm going to plan on running it the same day or the day after, um, where I can get the engine up to operating temperature and b boil off any water that's been left around, absolutely. Um, I nearly always change the oil after a um, wash. I won't this time. Um, it's just not going to get in there. Um, if Say I had the top cover off, which I've done in the past, and pressure washed all the cooling pins. You know, if your ignition coil's a little bit dicky and the um, epoxy coating around the outside of it's got a few cracks in it, yes, water will get in there, and yes, it could damage the coil. But the coil's already damaged. It's not going to last a lot longer. So I carry any part you could imagine for these little engines because I absolutely love them. Um, brand new or second hand. Um, it's not an issue for me. You know. Basically, when I get a parts mower, I use it for parts. And if I'm using secondhand parts on someone's build, I'm only charging them for the labour. I don't actually make, charge them for the parts. Different story though, if someone turns up and goes, I need a carburetor, um, I'll sell them on for, you know, 10, 15 dollars or whatever it is. Um, but if I'm doing service on someone, I'm basically just trying to get my time paid for. And chances are half the time, I've paid 10 dollars for a whole parts mower or less. Um, that being said, you do need to be a little bit careful pressure washing them. Um, you don't really want to fill the cylinder up with water, so you just avoid the air inlet um, and just use some common sense. Now, if it won't start afterwards, chances are you've probably got water in the ignition boot. So there's just one little um, question answered. On these, they've got an aluminium bore. Um, aluminium piston it's not going to rust out the cylinder anyway if you do happen to get water in there and leave it for a couple of days but i don't recommend it all right let's get this thing cleaned
here we are look much better so when I said this you know your basic department store machine it was actually sold under the brand name of Victor um, but I don't really want to talk about that because Victor used to be a great Australian brand um, and only use the best of the best parts uh, apart from some people don't like their plastic carburetors but I do anyhow um, this is basically a badged engineered Victor nothing against Victor themselves but they're, um, they've had to keep up with the cheap disposable machines I suppose um, and that's just the way it's gone so the original complaint with this machine was it was revving up and down then she gave it to her father and now it just revs its guts out and she mentioned something about replacing springs with links of wire so I think I already know where this is headed so we'll just delve straight into the carburetor governor and see what it has to show us how can people not tell when their fucking air filter is on backwards alright oh wow Okay, he um, kind of orchard that a little bit. Let's get a closer ring. What's the air filter like? Eh, it's dirty. But it hasn't dusted the engine, the throat of the carb's still clean. Right. So they've shortened the original governor spring by a good inch and then tied the throttle wide open with a piece of tie wire yeah no nah, it's just not going to work properly is it um not worrying we're going to raid a parts engine another parts machine get get that sorted and they're revving up and down probably just a carb diaphragm and also on these they run a very light bar blade so you know just even even the slightest um downfall of your engine mixture Mate, these surge like buggery. All right, another question I get, and that's um, why do I hardly ever replace the spark plugs? Well, I have a lot of trouble, or I have a lot more trouble with new plugs than I do reusing a good conditioned older one. I'm not sure what's happened to the quality over the years, but all the times I've had a spark plug fail, let's say nine times out of ten. It has been a brand new one. So, usually I'll pull them out, give them a bit of an inspection. That's almost like new. Um, the electrode's not worn, gap's pretty good. It's right to go for a bit. Now, just say for argument's sake, a month later, I'll get a call saying it won't run, and it is a spark plug, I'm gonna replace it free of charge. That's not an issue. Um, a lot of people go willy-nilly just replacing them and that's their prerogative you know well, I get 80,000 k's plus out of a set of plugs in my ute at 100 k's an hour you're talking about what 800 hours of runtime and it's gonna be a lot more than that because you, you're not sitting on 100 k's all day every day um, you generally service these things every 50 hours so pull it out have a look at the condition that's good i'm not going to charge them for a plug and they get a cheaper service out of me anyway so um that's really a non-issue but say if that i pulled that plug out and it was covered in oil one i'd look at how badly um carboned up the plug was now if it was all down the insulator and packed solid i'd throw it away and and use a new one then so if it just had a little bit of um <clears throat> crap on the tip I'd, I'd hit it with a wire brush and just see how it come up and how well it ran afterwards all right moving forward just gonna take this tank and um carb assembly off and, and rectify what needs to be fixed Mm. 
That one was loose. Oh, well. much fuel in it but there we go we'll go and rebuild that and then we've got to go and find some new springs Pretty clean. I'll replace that diaphragm, it's a little bit stretched. The bowl itself's got a little bit of crap in it. Seen plenty worse, so I'll just give this tank a quick scrub, blow out in here with some compressed air, and um, our mesh filter has a couple little bits of crud in it, but it's pretty good. I'll just give everything a quick clean and put a new diaphragm in this, and we'll send it. Not seeing anything awful, but when the diaphragm split like this, it's not pumping fuel properly anymore. All right, here's our tank all cleaned up. New diaphragm, rubber gasket down first, then the um, cardboard gasket. Still got a little bit of the um, diesel from the parts washer on the top of the tank, so seems to have created like a vacuum effect, anyway. Carburetor. Sit the first screw in there, don't tighten it down, just and we can sort of manipulate it to where we need it. And sit all the others because the, the start of the screw is a lot smaller, it sits in the thread. So you can sit them all in there and sort of rock it backwards and forwards and it moves the gasket around to where you need it. Like so. I work in a diagonal pattern. So doesn't really work too well with only five screws that hold the um, carb down, but so be it. Cross. And 
You don't really want to overdo these screws. You can warp the plastic carburetor body. You don't want to really leave them loose either because you can get air leaks. So I just like to get them wound all the way down and just give them one last little sort of a tweak. Like that. 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 So in theory, we've got a good working carburetor. All right, back over here. We'll get rid of this tire wire. Might as well just get rid of this governor spring while we're going. It's foobard. Um, Rubbish. Beautiful. A little um, anti-surge spring we'll click on. I call it an anti-surge spring, but some people call it the idle spring, but whatever. It is what it is. So that may need adjusting. We'll play it by ear once we get the engine running. Get on there. Okay. All right, carburetor. And I'll put our bolts. There's one bolt. As usual, don't tighten this one right up until you've got the other one started. So it's breaking stuff. Right. Don't forget your little spacer that goes in here. Sometimes it falls out. There's one. Two. See our throttle cable like it's sort of twisted around a bit. Why is it you don't hear a car come past all day? And then as soon as you want to record something, every truck in the goddamn district comes past. Alright, so the throttle's in the stop position on the handlebars, so we'll reapply our um, cable there. So left the screwdriver behind. Uh, and our little PCV boot, which I should have slid on when I put the carburetor on, but not to worry. We'll get it on one way or not. Ah, oh, you little prick. There we have it. Now we're good. Air filter um, gasket. Now I'm just gonna have to clean this air filter, so we'll come right back. I just hit this with a bit of, um, where are we? A bit of dishwashing liquid, a bit of water, wring it out, let it dry, then re oil it, and we're done. All right, everything's back together. I haven't put any fuel in it yet. The dogs want to have a fight in the background. He's
half a tank will be plenty. Oh, it's priming nicely. Throttles appears to be working good. Now, Ona did say that she had ran out, she ran out of oil, or to where nothing came out on the dipstick, and then her partner had just topped it up. So yeah, it's got some metal in it. I'll just let that drain, chuck some fresh stuff in it, and um, might just do a final tidy up and send this thing on its way. it up a little bit not a bad little machine but that engine is wasted on one of those cheap flimsy decks now chuck this engine on a nice rover base with a nice heavy blade you'll have a really good mower so before we close this one off i'd just like to give a quick shout out to a mate of mine um he's got got a channel he's just started up if you're into you know australian mopar chryslers valiants whatever you want to call them um be a good one to check out um, he's not much of a talker but he puts a lot of sort of videos together of the restorations he does so um, go and see out check out Coop's cars down in the comments below and um, thanks for watching